Now, I just recently did this photo shoot of my friend Melissa, who is also a photographer. She did awesome. This is really her first photo shoot. So it was uh, kind of a learning experience for both of us. And I don't really do studio work a lot. So it was fun, but there are some imperfections in the photo that I want to remove. This background is super dirty. This is a paper background that obviously was used before. I should have just torn it off and pulled down the paper more, but we had the space for free, so I didn't really want to do that. And I said, you know what? I'll fix it in post. So I'm going to show you how to fix it in post. Let's get started with this one because there's a lot here. There is the ground, there's some light stand over here, and there is the umbrella. So first let's zoom into the bottom. I'm going to press the letter Z. And as long as scrubby zoom is checked on the top toolbar up here, you can click and drag to zoom in or out, then hold spacebar and you can click and grab. So zoom in, spacebar, and you can um, control where you're looking. I'm gonna use a square selection tool over here. Looks like a little square. If you don't see it, click and hold, and you, there may be multiple options in your menu. My menu is uh, customized, so it's a little different than yours. But rectangular marquee is what you need. We're gonna select this whole area just above where the paper ends. Don't get the foot in there, uh, but make sure to get the wooden floor. Now I'm gonna press Shift F5 to get my, my fill dialog here. You can also get that by going to edit and then fill. And now make sure that content aware fill is checked and click OK. So this is going to look at what's in here and what's outside of there and try to blend the two. And that did a pretty darn good job. There's a little bit of repetition with this little <laughs> foot print here that's super easy to fix but hey that's amazing a lot of time saved same thing over here we can use our selection tool the polygon lasso tool is actually a good option for this one so this just allows us to draw custom polygon shapes grab the light stand and the shadow shift f5 press enter and boom look at that a few keyboard shortcuts and you are making magic in photoshop this one let's uh, select this guy boom boom outside the image Shift F5, enter, and voila freaking law. Look at that. It's perfect, right? Well, not quite yet. There's still a lot of dirt in the background. So there's a few things we can do. We could use the really time-wasting method and use our clone stamp and our healing tool and just erase every single smudge, you know, sampling from somewhere that's clean in the photo. That would maintain some texture, but as the light changes around the photo with fall off of lighting, it's gonna be a little imperfect and tricky to keep up the con consistent quality and not making it look smudgy. The other option is a little bit easier and will work for most situations, not all. So what we're gonna do is go to Select, Subject, and now Photoshop will do its best to draw an automatic selection around her, which is great. I also wanna include the wooden box she's on. So I'm gonna press W, which for me opens my quick selection tool. I love this brush. It's a selection brush. You basically drag over stuff and Photoshop grabs the edges for you. That's great, lots of time saved, okay? It's missing her heel, but I'm not gonna, not gonna stress about that in this video. This is just to show you the technique. With our selection made, right click on the layer, duplicate, click okay. Now the selection is still here, that's good because we wanna turn that into a layer mask. So click on the layer mask button in the layer panel. And now we have two layers with this weird white and black thing. What is this? This is a layer mask, which essentially means the top layer is just her. The background is masked out with black. So white is visible, black is invisible. All right, now the bottom layer is the same picture, but it still has the background. So essentially we have her on the top layer and then the background on the bottom layer, which means we can blur and do other things to the background behind her to clean it up a little bit. So to do that, go to filter, blur, and surface blur. Surface blur will blur things that are only past a certain threshold of detail. This is great for skin, actually. I do use this for skin a lot. Now I have the settings turned up like crazy because I'm, I'm blurring the background, not people's skin. So don't do that to anybody. But if you look, it's already erasing a lot of the finer smudges. We turn it off by unchecking preview. It goes back to how it was. So before and after. It removes a lot of the texture, which you may not want, depending on what your background is, but also removes the small uh, spots of dust and dirt. So I am just gonna click okay on that. And then the little spots that are still distracting, kind of standing out, the brighter spots, you can use the clone tool or a brush tool to erase those. Let's go to another image and I'm gonna show you how to use the brush tool to clean stuff up. So just like I did before, I'm gonna select the edge of my uh, light diffuser over here, Shift F5, Content Aware Fill. All right, deselect. Now go to Select and Subject. We're gonna put her on a top layer as well as the couch. We don't wanna blur the couch or paint over the couch. So with my uh, spot selection tool, which is W on my keyboard, I'm just clicking and dragging over the couch and it is doing a super good job at selecting it because there's a lot of contrast. The black and the white is super good for Photoshop to 
um, know where things start and end. Okay, we got her. Double uh, right click and duplicate. Enter. Turn that selection into a mask. Now on the background layer, we're actually going to make a empty blank layer in between. We're going to paint onto this with our brush tool, which is the letter B on your keyboard. Right click and make sure you have a very soft circular brush. You may have to turn your hardness down to zero to get a soft brush. I have some custom made brushes that are just circles, but they're super soft. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to sample from a few different areas and paint over to basically kind of neutralize the detail. So I'm going to start in the middle, which is kind of bright, right behind her where that light is hitting. Because I was lazy and didn't use a grid on my modifier. So hold Alt or Option on Mac and click. And now your color is changed to whatever color you clicked on. I can sample her skin tone. I can sample her sweater. Anything. So right click on the background. Click. Now press the number 5 on your keyboard to change your brush transparency to 50%. That means we're not painting full on, but just 50%. Also, make sure your painting layer is selected, the one in the middle. Now, just click and paint. Now, let's do a new area. We don't want to paint bright gray over here because that's not how it was. Hold Alt and sample the new dark gray. Paint a little bit there. Alt, sample from over here. Paint, paint, paint. Sample from here. See what I'm doing? I'm kind of moving around my photo, keeping that natural gradient of light fall off. Um, and just, uh, you know, just lightly, little brushy brush here and there to cover up the detail. If you want to add, you know, more shadow, you can use a, you can make your color darker and just paint around the edge to sort of like do a little vignette. You can cancel out some of that bright background if you don't want it to be bright. I mean, you can paint like color behind her. <laughs> I don't know, you have a lot of control when you have these layers separated like this. So let's look at it before and after. Before, after. Now, I think I painted a little too much, right? It's too blah, it's too flat. So we could either just click undo and go back a few steps and paint lighter, or we can turn the transparency down of this uh, middle paint layer. So now it's at 50%. So my painting is 50% there, which looks pretty good. Now I am actually gonna zoom into these areas and clone these out. So let's hide our painted layer by clicking on the little eyeball in the layer section. Press S for clone stamp, which is also over here. It looks like a stamp. And for this, you can Alt or Option click on Mac, an area, and it samples it. But not the color, it samples the actual pixels. So look, I'm actually painting the pixels from one area onto another. So I can paint my clean areas on top of the dirty areas. And as long as your lighting is consistent and you're going in the right direction, this works great. Now, don't do this. Don't sample from a dark area and paint over a light area, because then it's very obvious. So try to find where the light, what the direction of the light, and go perpendicular to that. Oop, that was too bright, so I'm gonna go a little darker. There we go. You gotta be you gotta be real careful and clever. Now these spots are too dark. So I need to get a little bit of a brighter area. Maybe that one. Yeah, that works a little bit better. Awesome. So I'm just holding Alt and clicking and painting. Alt click. Alt click paint. Alt click paint. Get, get these scratches off here. Yes, it's tedious, and yes, it takes time, but you know what? So does anything that's good. So just get over it, learn Photoshop. You'll thank me later when you can do things that nobody else in your area can do. Now these areas are a little troublesome. I'm not able to get these scrapes off because they cover such a large area. So I'm going to try another tool in my arsenal of retouching is the J key, which is the, for me, is the spot healing brush. I love this tool because you can just paint and then it fills it in. Ooh, look at that. It's almost always perfect. Almost always. Not always, but just almost always. And it does a great job. And in fact, this is a lot easier than the spot healing brush because I don't have to sample. It's kind of sampling, at least I think, it samples from what's around where you painted, just like the content where fill, and it fills in the gaps for you. Not sure if it's AI or what it is, but it does a really good job. So I think that this tool, the spot healing brush, combined with a little bit of background paint over, um, is probably your best bet for cleaning up dirty backgrounds. So you that footprint on the wall. We don't want that to be distracting from our subject. Um, so those two tools are great. Now we still have our painted layer, which we can fade in or out if we want. We can maybe paint a really light white color right behind her. I actually just sampled from her sweater. Look at this, I'm brightening up around her. Not too much, just a little bit. Cool, I like that too, that looks nice. Kind of puts the focus on her. Here's another easy one, let's zoom into the bottom. Use our square marquee tool. Boom, shift F5, hit enter. Content, content aware fill makes my job so much easier. 
And then let's use our J spot healing brush to uh, clean this up. Now look, I'm painting, but nothing's happening. Why? Because I still have this selected area down here. So all Photoshop will let me do is work within this section. So to get rid of a selection, go to select and deselect, which is also control D. All right, so now I can work on the whole photo. So again, I'm using my spot healing brush, just touching up a few areas. By the way, this tool is incredible for two other things, removing pimples and stray hairs. If you do have stray hairs and you're having trouble removing them, I have two videos that cover different techniques that have been huge hits on YouTube because they get the job done. So definitely go check out those videos. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can learn how to clean up stray hairs. And that is the gist of it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or if I skipped anything or said something wrong, which happens occasionally, let me know down in the comments and I'll help you out. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you see future videos. I do plan on making some more photography and Photoshop Lightroom related content soon. So if you're into that, jump on board and you'll see me soon.